What's up guys and welcome to a spooky Yu-Gi-Oh! trivia on the Burning Abyss archetype. So the Burning Abyss, known as Afterlife, is one of the two TCG exclusive archetypes that debuted in Duelist Alliance, alongside the Ultra Athletes archetype. They are all level 3 dark fiend type effect monsters, excluding their boss monster, Malakoda. The archetype is based on Inferno, the first part of Dante Alighieri's 14th century epic poem, known as the Divine Comedy. Fun fact, I also played a game called Dante's Inferno on the PlayStation 3 back in the day. That was actually based on the Divine Comedy, and I think also to my knowledge Devil May Cry series has like allusions to the Divine Comedy, especially since the fact they're called like Dante and Virgil and things like that. Uh, why did I mention all of this? Well, <laughs> it's simply because I love the Devil May Cry series. Fun fact. Now, the Mel branch of the Burning Abyss are named after the demons who guard the Eighth Circle of Hell, known for their ruthless cruelty they are responsible for the punishment of corrupt politicians by holding them under a boiling lake of pitch. Their English names are truncations of their original Italian names of the demons. Truncations uh, pretty much means that the part of their original name is sliced off to make their actual card names. As well, their Japanese names are the English names used in Dorothy L. Sayers translation of Inferno. So let's get started. Alec Mel branch of the Burning Abyss. So this card specifically represents the demon Alecchino the Harlequin. Alecchino's name is commonly regarded as a garbled version of the Italian word for Harlequin, with the Italian word being Arlecchino. His most significant contribution to the plot is when he persuades the other devils to leave Bonturo Deity alone. Bonturo is supposed to summon other sinners from the Lake of Boiling Pitch on request by Dante. But Bonturo doesn't call at his friends. Instead, he fools the devils and escapes back to the lake, and Alicino tries in vain to catch him. This causes a fight between Alicino and Calcabrina, which causes them to fall into the lake. The other devils put the blame on Virgil and Dante, and hunt them. Each of the Burning Abyss cards possess a unique effect. This monster's effect is it negates the effects of a targeted face-up monster on the field until the end of the turn. And this card appears in the artwork of Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. Next up, Barber, Mel Branch of the Burning Abyss. So this card specifically represents the demon Barbaricia, the curly beard otherwise known as. Barbaricia seems to be the most important devil after Malakoda, as he becomes the head of nine other devils when Malakoda commands them to escort Dante and Virgil. Now this card's unique ability is he banishes up to three targeted Burning Abyss cards in the controller's graveyard, except Barbar. He then inflicts 300 damage to the opponent for each banished card. And did you know, he also appears under the name Barbaricia in Konami's Castlevania games. Cagna, Mel Branch of the Burning Abyss. Now this card specifically represents the demon Cagnazo, the nasty dog, whose name is reflected in this card's canine appearance. Cagna in Italian means bitch, which in English means female dog, alluding to the fact that this card is a female dog. This card's unique ability is it sends a Burning Abyss spell or trap card from the controller's deck to the graveyard. And this card also appears under the name Cagnazo in Konami's Castlevania games. Kalkab, Mal Branch of the Burning Abyss. Now this card represents the demon Kalkabrina, the Grace Stomper, with its unique ability being it returns a targeted set spell or trap card on the field to the owner's hand. And this monster appears in the artwork of Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. Sir Melbranch of the Burning Abyss. Now this card specifically represents the demon Siriato, the Wild Hog, whose name is also reflected in this card's pig-like appearance. Also, when formally named in Inferno, Siriato is introduced in a pair with Graphia Cain, whose card counterpart was released in the same set as Sir. This card's unique ability is it special summons a targeted Burning Abyss monster in the controller's graveyard, except Sir. And this monster, to a certain degree, resembles Ganon from the Legend of Zelda series, another one of my favourite series of all time. Draghig, male branch of the Burning Abyss. This card specifically represents the demon Draghignazo, the big nasty dragon. 
What a name. This card's unique ability is the controller chooses and places a Burning Abyss card from the deck to the top of the deck. And this monster also appears under the name Drachignazo in Konami's Castlevania games. Farfa, Malbranch of the Burning Abyss. Now this card specifically represents the demon Farfarello, possibly meaning goblin. Each of the members possess a unique effect. This monster's is it banishes a targeted monster on the field until the end phase. Graph. Male branch of the Burning Abyss. Now, this card represents the demon Graphia Kane, the dog scratcher, whose name is reflected in this card's canine appearance, as well as the scratching motion it's doing with its claws. This card's unique ability is it special summons a Burning Abyss monster from the controller's deck except Graph. Libic, male branch of the Burning Abyss. This card specifically represents the demon Libby Coco the Libyan Hothead. This card's unique ability is the controller special summons one level three dark fiend type monster from their hand with its effects negated. Rubik, male branch of the Burning Abyss. This card specifically represents the demon Rubicante, the red-faced terror. He also appears under the name Lubicant in Konami's Castlevania games, and this is the only Burning Abyss monster that doesn't have an effect that activates in the graveyard thus far. Also, this monster's unique effect is it's a tuna monster. Skarm, male branch of the Burning Abyss. This monster specifically represents the demon Skarmiglione, the troublemaker. Amusingly, Skarmiglione is the first of the male branch to be introduced by name in Inferno, as well as the first of the Burning Abyss monsters to be spoiled for the TCG. That's crazy. He also appears under the name Skull Million in Konami's Castlevania games. And this card's unique ability is the controller adds a level 3 dark fiend type monster from their deck to their hands during the end phase of the turn Skarm was sent to the graveyard. Next up, Malakoda, Neverlord of the Burning Abyss. This card gains its name from the character Malakoda from the Divine Comedy. In the poem, Malakoda served as the leader of the Male Branch, a band of demons who guard the fifth Bolgia of the Malbog. He also appears under the name Malakoda in Konami's Castlevania games, and this is the first ritual monster of the Burning Abyss archetype. This monster also appears in the artwork of Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss. This card is the second ritual monster to be printed as a ghost. Most rare, the first being Herald of Perfection. Now, there are also some support monsters that represent Dante Alighieri, Virgil, and Beatrice. Or if we're going by Devil May Cry, Dante, Virgil, and Trish. So first up we have Dante, Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss. This monster appears in the artworks of The Terminus of the Burning Abyss. Like Dante, Traveller of the Burning Abyss, this monster is a representation of the real-world Italian poet Dante Alighieri. Unlike Traveller, this card depicts Dante in the final section of the poem, Paradiso. In it, Dante finally reaches heaven after a harrowing journey through hell and purgatory. He is greeted by his love Beatrice, who guides him through the realms of the angels to the Empyrean and God himself. Dante, Traveller of the Burning Abyss. This monster appears in the artwork of The Traveller and The Burning Abyss, Good and Evil in The Burning Abyss, and The Terminus of The Burning Abyss. In the latter card's artwork, this monster is seen being transformed into Dante, Pilgrim of The Burning Abyss. This card appears to portray the inferno portion of the poem, which depicts Dante's journey through the nine layers of hell. This card's light attribute may be a reference to Dante's ultimate fate in Paradiso, where he ascends through heaven for an encounter with God and Christ in the Empyrean realm. Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss. This monster is based on the real world ancient Roman poet Virgil, whose true name was Pubulus Virgilius Maro. In the Divine Comedy, Virgil was made into Dante's guide through hell and a great part of purgatory. And this monster appears in the artwork of the Terminus of the Burning Abyss. And finally, Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal. This monster appears in the artwork of the Terminal of the Burning Abyss. In Dante's Divine Comedy, Beatrice was Dante's childhood love interest and his guide during his journey to heaven. This is referenced through this card ability to use Dante monster as an Xyz material for its Xyz summon. This card's attack and defense are the inverse of Dante, Pilgrim of the Burning Abysses. And this card at number 77, the Seven Sins, are the first extra deck monsters in the TCG whose materials and effects are not separated by a line. Instead, it uses the forward slash symbol to separate its materials and its effects due to not having enough space on the card to print the effect otherwise. However, this is only the case in non-English prints of number 77. Some of the bonus cards are Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, Good and Evil in the Burning Abyss, The Terminus of the Burning Abyss, and Traveller and the Burning Abyss. 
And with that, guys, let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Have you ever played this deck? What would you rate this deck? Because I've never actually seen it played before. Is it any good? But other than that, I want to say thanks a lot for watching, guys. Catch you later.